Hello, welcome back to the garden. Just in the greenhouse and today I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to be rejuvenating the soil in this raised bed. It's the beginning of February now and here in the UK we're still in midwinter but it's not going to be long before we really have to get a move on especially outside getting everything prepared for all of our crops. So today what I need to be doing is sorting this raised bed out. I'm hoping that I'm going to put a crop of peas in here. I've got an early variety of peas called Early Onward. I actually sowed them in modules a couple of days ago. And the reason for that, putting them in modules rather than sowing them direct in here, is because this raised bed needs quite a lot of work. Um, I built my greenhouse a year ago. This raised bed went straight in. It got filled up with um, no bought in compost, I don't think. It was just all compost that I'd made at home and um, topsoil and bits and pieces like that. And as you can see, it's pretty dusty. I grew tomatoes pretty successfully in here last year. I even put an irrigation system in, but I was in a hurry when I put the irrigation system in. Some of the uh, the hose pipe around the back here and down there all got twisted and it did water it a little bit, but not as good as it should have done. I didn't rectify that for the rest of the year and then I just um, watered my um, tomatoes with watering can and didn't think too much about it. So since then, the soil has been allowed to go bone dry. I'm sure lots of the good organisms and bacteria in the soil are pretty much dead now. So today we need to get some lovely compost put on top of here. But before I do that, I think I need to take this irrigation system out so I can reinstall it properly. I absolutely love this irrigation system. It was really budget friendly, but also so simple to install. So definitely recommend it. And I would be lost without it in my polytunnel, to be honest. I've got loads of connectors from my kit left. So now I've cut that all off, I can reconnect it with a straight bit of hose pipe. So it will actually work properly next year. Over the last couple of years, since I built my polytunnel and my greenhouse, one thing that I've tried to be consistent with is not buying in compost to go in my raised beds or in the beds in the polytunnel. When you buy in compost, obviously costs money, but also you don't know what you're bringing into the ground or what contamination could be within the soil that you're buying or the compost, whether it's residual weed killers, um, seeds from you know weeds like mare's tail, and stuff like that. I'm really lucky here. The only um, invasive thing I've got is crocosmia, which over the last couple of years, we're really trying to just dig out and stuff. So I'm really keen to continue going forward with that. So I've got a number of compost heaps up in my garden. And over the last month, I've really been trying to clean up that area. And one of the things that I do need to do is move my compost bins. So what I can do today is actually empty them, ready to put a nice big mulch on top of the um, bed here, which will then mean I can put the compost heap into the area that I want it to be going forward. So, Enough of me talking, let's go and collect some lovely free compost. Here is the first and the second compost bin that I need to move today. I started these off probably about a year ago I just put stuff in the top. Don't really worry too much about how the mix is. I just hope that it composts down as it goes. These compost bins are called Daleks. They're cold composters. So they don't reach those big, big temperatures needed to kill off all the weed seeds and stuff like that. I put grass clippings in here. I've got loads of weeds in the grass. So at the end of the day, they've probably got quite a few weed seeds in here. Um, I've not even looked in the top of them. So there's probably quite a lot of organic matter that hasn't composted down either. So the first thing we need to do is just lift them both on. Then I can take away all of the uncomposted green matter on the top and put them back in one of these. And then we should be left behind with some lovely black gold that we can fill up that raised bed with. 
we're going to start with this one because I can see already that we have loads of compost already spilling out of it. So I'm really excited to see how much we're going to get. Oh my goodness, come and have a look at this. When I took this lid off, I definitely thought there was going to be half green waste on the top and not as much compost as there is. There has to be at least 100 litres here, so I'm so pleased. But I don't know if you can notice, there definitely is a little rat run down there and there is fresh rat droppings on the top. So if you are going to be making your homemade compost, just make sure you do wear gloves, which I don't really always wear gloves. But if you are going to be handling any compost like this, always make sure that you wash your hands with soap and water after you've been here. But I, I'm not worried about rats, to be honest, in terms of, you know, I'm not scared of them. But how much compost is here, I'm so excited. Probably call me sad now, but I think making compost is one of my most favourite hobbies. It's so amazing how, you know, you throw in a load of organic matter and nature turns it into amazing compost. And compost is so expensive, so it's great to be able to make it, especially when you know what's in there. So I've got um, three 35 litre buckets here and one 30. So I think all I'm gonna do is just fill these up and then I can easily put it into the raised beds. So I'm pretty pleased actually. I've managed to fill up four of the buckets about two thirds full. I don't wanna make them too heavy for me. And I've still got so much compost left over. So it's definitely gonna stretch so far. I thought I was only gonna maybe get one or two buckets out of this. And I've not even looked at that one over there. It's just started raining now. So let's head down into the greenhouse and get this spread out. Just in case you're wondering, this bed is uh, two meters 30, which is just under eight foot, I believe. And I know that because I just measured it. I am so pleased that I managed to get this task done today. It only took about half an hour and I think my crops are gonna do so well in this compost. Looking at the depth of this mulch, I mean, it easily must be about maybe an inch and a half or something like that. So it's gonna be amazing. My peas are gonna do well in here. My tomatoes are gonna do well in here. And I haven't thought about what other crops I'm gonna be growing in this bed over the next um, kind of growing season will be, but they're all gonna do pretty good, I think. I've put the um, irrigation hose back on the top. It's still disconnected there. Um, but what I'm gonna do is take it back so the connector's on the inside. So in the winter, I don't have a hose pipe coming through the door. I can just um, disconnect it and close it all up. Um, but that will happen on another day. Also, I mentioned earlier in this video that this compost is created by a cold compost system, which means that I'm probably gonna turn my back and within 24 hours, we're gonna have a green carpet here of loads of weed seedlings. So what I am gonna be doing, which is the first time I've actually ever done it in any of my growing areas is that I'm going to put a layer of wood chip on the top of here. That will help keep the moisture in, but it will also help suppress all of those weeds, which will hopefully make it much lower maintenance. I would be putting that wood chip on now, but I've not actually made that wood chip. Earlier this week, me and a friend have actually coppiced one of my hazel trees that's on a um, coppicing rotation of about five years. We've managed to take that down back to the ground. It's created me some lovely logs that I'll be able to use in my wood burner, but it's also created a load of um, kind of the smaller branches and things like that that are absolutely amazing to mulch, or sorry, to chip and then lay across um, the ground. So I've not made that yet, but I am so pleased to be doing that because I think that's really gonna make a massive difference this year. 
The best thing about all of this though today is that this amazing, amazing black gold didn't cost me a penny to make. If I'd bought in this compost, I'd probably spent at least kind of, I don't know, 10, maybe, um, kind of you know $15 or something like that but this is absolutely free it's organic I know there's no pesticides on it I know that um there's no pernicious weeds in here apart from the ones I already have and you cannot beat that so if you don't make your own compost make sure that is the number one thing that you prioritize this year anyway that is the end of the video. I really, really, really hope that you've enjoyed watching today's video. If you are new here, please do hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to so be notified of all of my latest videos. As ever, YouTube have some videos up now on the screen that they think you'll like. So please go ahead and watch those and I'll catch up with you in the next episode. Bye.